Hi everyone, and thanks for stopping by. Today's project is something I've always wanted to try. It's a commemorative plate. It has your standard plate shape on the rear, and on the front has writing and a 3D model cut into it. This is made from a single piece of New Zealand Remu, and here's how I made it. I'm starting by marking the centre of my material here with a cross and then using a 60 degree V bit I'm going to position this right on the spot here. This will become my X and Y zero. I'll be doing the same on the other side of the material when I flip it and again I'll be able to line it up using the same method and be able to get the plate in perfect registration. I've now changed my V cutter for a 6mm cutter and I'm just going to zero this but I'm going to zero it on the outside edge here because this outside edge is flat there's a slight bow in this timber here I don't need to flatten it uh, for this side here so there's a slight bow there uh, but this reference edge here will be nice and flat, so I'm going to use this here. Also, when I finish cutting in the center here, this will be uh, the wrong height anyway, so I need a, a reference point which isn't going to get touched. So in actual fact, I'll, I'll bring it over to this point here, because uh, this corner here won't get touched at all. I'm just going to set the cutter by eye. I'm going to bring the cutter down until I can no longer see light passing under the blades of the cutter. And there we go there. I'll call that Z0. Okay, well that's the roughing cut done. Uh, as you can see, I've made a bit of an error here. This should have been dead centre of this piece of wood, but somewhere along the line I got it wrong. Uh, the original plan called for this here to be uh, a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of timber, but this is actually 12 inch by 11 and a half, and for some reason I measured down from the top 6 inches as well as in from the side 6 inches. So. Well, my side is correct, uh, the centre isn't quite right. This isn't going to be a problem, I can fix that, no worries, because I've machined away a lot more material than I actually need. The main thing is, I need to make sure that this spot is transferred to the back of the material, so when I flip it, I get it right. Okay, well what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to change the cutter to this here. It's a 3 millimeter. Uh, ball nose cutter and I'm going to cut the profile on here Right, well that's the plate cut, the back of the plate. And that's come up really nice. It's nice and smooth. 
that's really good I basically don't need to do anything to to finish this I've remarked my center position of my plate onto the other side of the board and I lined up my uh, V cutter to that center point now I've established that this point here is the lowest point on this board so I'm going to set my cutter to here call this zero and flatten the entire board so that I've got a nice reference surface to work from Now you might well ask, why did I machine this with this cutter rather than uh, flatten the board on a, a thicknesser? Uh, the answer is I actually don't have a thicknesser to machine the board flat. So this is the easiest way of doing it. Now I could have used a much bigger cutter and done it a lot quicker, but uh, this particular cutter gives a really nice finish. I basically don't need to touch this again. If I'd used a uh, something like this here, it would have left witness marks on there. So it's taken a bit of extra time, but I basically don't have to do any more finishing to this. So uh, I'm more than happy to have done it and spend the extra time. Well now it's time to do the rough cut. Normally I'd change this cutter out for uh, something like this, a 6mm cutter or something. But in this particular instance, because I've leveled this here off to zero, I don't really want to change it. So I'm going to be lazy. It's going to take more time, but hey, who cares. Uh, so I'm going to use this uh, my, my uh, 3mm bull-nosed cutter and do the rough cut for it. It'll take about 45 minutes but uh, it means that this cutter is still zeroed perfectly to this material and I don't need to shag about with it when it comes time to do the final cut. Okay, the rough cut is now finished. I can now move on to the final cut. Because I didn't change the cutter for a larger one, I don't need to re-zero my cutter to this job. Well that's come out very nice and will require no finishing, it uh, basically is finished as it stands. Right, the next thing I need to do is I need to provide a reference mark on here and I also need to find an alternative method of securing this down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run the laser on this next and put the engraving on here and around here. So I can no longer use X0, Y0 here 
I've got no way of referencing to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my cutter out to here and I'm going to put a small mark here and that will provide me with a known reference point. Also because of the way the laser works my hold downs are going to be in the way so I'm going to have to uh, remove them. So I'll get that done. Right, so I've just made a wee mark here with a 60 degree V cutter. I'm now going to mark on here X minus 140 Y minus 120 and that's that spot's position. It's now attached in two places here and here, that will be sufficient. I can now remove my clamps and get them out of the way. Once I've done the lasering job, I will put my clamps back on and do the final cut to cut this hair out. Well, the laser shoe's in place, and I've used this mark here to set up the laser's position. By entering these figures here, once I'd aligned them up with my reference marks on the laser shoe, I was able to get the laser into the zero zero position. All that remains is to run the file. Now a moment of truth to see what it came out like. I think I can live with that. That looks very nice indeed. It's positioned where I want it to be. So the next job is to cut out my plate. Well, I've moved, removed the laser shoe. Next, I need to reset this back where it used to be. So, again, I'm going to put my ever useful 60 degree V cutter. I should mention the only thing I ever use this V cutter for is for locating things. It's no longer any good for, it never actually was any good for cutting uh, the V carving, but uh, it is excellent for finding centres. So. What I've got to do is I've got to get my V-cutter back in the spot again. That looks pretty good, so what I'll do is I'll enter here minus 120 and X minus 140. Now I've changed the cutter and I've zeroed it to the surface of my plate here on the flat area here. Time we go to origin again, and we're ready to start cutting.
Okay, well next I need to remove these here. I'm going to do this on a disc sander. And here's the finished result. I gave it a light sanding around the outside here to get rid of the holding tabs and to just finish the edges. Just the merest sand on the inside here just really didn't require much at all. And a bit of an oil to finish it off. And I think it's it's brought the colour up very nicely on this Renew. Well, that's it guys. I hope you've enjoyed watching, and maybe you'll make one yourself one day. Okay, we'll catch you later. Cheers.